In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the best mouse and keyboard settings for the brand new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Those of you that are brand new to mouse and keyboard, these are going to be some keybinds that you want to learn on. I have my settings based on two different types of gaming peripherals that you will need. You're going to need a gaming style keyboard and you're going to need a gaming style mouse that has two side buttons on it. And just in case you're wondering, the peripherals that I am using, I have a Ninja Air 58 Final Mouse and I have a SteelSeries Apex Pro TKL keyboard. Okay, once you have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 pulled up, you're going to want to navigate over to the top right hand of your screen. You're going to want to click on settings and then you're going to want to click on keyboard and mouse and before we get into the mouse settings i do want to let you guys know that i am using 400 dpi on my mouse so that's probably what i'm going to be basing my settings off of so everything that you see here is based off of 400 dpi so let's go ahead and look at what my mouse sensitivity is and the easiest mouse sensitivity to use on this game is going to be 12.0 paired up with that 400 dpi it's going to be so perfect you're going to have nice control you're going to have good flicks if you have a big mouse pad this is perfect if you have a medium sized mouse pad this is also perfect if you have a small mouse pad, sorry, you're shit out of luck. I'm so sorry about that. Increase the sensitivity to maybe like 14 to go from there. However, if you really want to take your aim to the next level, 12 sensitivity is perfect. All right, so now moving on down, your ADS sensitivity multiplier is going to be one. You definitely don't want to play with this at all. Your ADS sense multiplier is going to be one as well. Your mouse sensitivity type is going to be relative. And now we get on to the another big setting called monitor distant coefficient. Let me go ahead and explain what that means right now. All right, so I just loaded myself up into a private match in the game and I want to briefly explain more about the monitor distance coefficient. I'm going to try my best to explain it. I know it can be a very debatable topic on which number you should be using. However, let me first explain what it actually means. The reason why they created this setting was what type of aspect ratio and what type of monitor that you have. Do you have ultra wide? Do you have 16 by 9? All these different aspect ratios that you have, the, uh, the you know, the monitor distance coefficient would matter. And why it matters is because of how you could do a full 360 without, you know, having to swipe so much on your mouse pad to even get around. Basically, your monitor distance coefficient is going to change how your sensitivity feels in a sense. So if you are playing on a normal 16x9 like I am right now, most people play on 16x9, 1.33 and 1.78 are the two numbers that the Call of Duty world likes to throw around. Some people say use 1.33. Some people say use, you know, 1.78. For me, I like the 1.78. I don't know why. It just feels more responsive. It feels like I'm more in the game. And it just feels like I don't have to flail my arms left, right, and center so much like the 1.33 is. I used to play with 1.33 when I was on 1920 by 1080. I play on 1.78 on, uh, you know, when I'm playing on 2K right now. I don't think those have any sort of, you know, coalition within, within themselves. I just know that whenever you're setting your game to 1.78, your sensitivity is going to feel more, more responsive in the sense that you can flick around and do 360s way better because that setting was typically for a wider monitor. Now, it was technically for a wider monitor however some may say it was for you know 2560 by 1440 you know this is why it brings up so much debate in this industry because you know it's all about personal preference and what you feel and how you know how it makes your game feel i personally think that i can connect way more shots when i'm using 1.78 it just feels 10 times better try it out for yourselves let me don't let me know in the comment section down below whether you guys like 1.33 or 1.78 better once you have my dpi and my sensitivity that i'm showing you guys in this video you guys should flip between 1.78 and 1.33 monitor coefficients and see which one feels much better for you the one that i like the most again is 1.78 that's what i would recommend you start with and if that feels way too responsive in a sense, you can drop down to 1.33. You're just going to have to flip between the two and just, you know, see which one feels better. It, you know, I get so many, you know, questions in the comments on my other videos, which one should be better? No, use this 1.33, use 1.78. You have to just try it for yourself and you're going to have to let me know in the comment section on which one you settle on. Before we get into the gameplay settings, I first want to talk about the field of view settings. As far as the whole definition of field of view, I think that we all know what FOV means at this point. I'm going to have mine on 120. I feel like it's the best when it comes to this sensitivity and this pairing. 
my ADS field of view is going to be affected. Your weapon field of view is going to be wide. I'm pretty sure it comes with, what does it come with? Default at first. Pretty much what this means is it's going to make your gun a little bit smaller and it's going to make your field of view, kind of in a sense, make it feel wider because the gun appears much smaller on your screen. Highly recommend putting this on wide. Third person field of view is going to be 90. Vehicle field of view is also going to be wide. Moving down to the camera settings, we're going to want the first person camera movement at least 50%, third person as well, and then the third person ADS transition is going to be first person ADS, and then default spectator camera game perspective. Okay, so now we're going to be moving on to the gameplay settings, and we're going to click gameplay, and then we're going to go on to crouch behavior. That is going to be on toggle. Prone behavior is going to be on toggle as well. Automatic tactical sprint needs to be on. Tactical sprint behavior is going to be single tap sprint. Automatic airborne mantle is going to be partial. Share, slide, and dive inputs are going to be independent. You're going to want to scroll down a little bit and we're going to have aim down sight behavior is going to be hold. Change the zoom shared input is going to be sprint, tactical sprint, and focus. Equipment behavior is going to be hold. Interact behavior is going to be press. Weapon mount activation is going to be weapon mount toggle. Up armor plate behavior, you're going to want to set this to apply all. I think by default it comes with apply one, but you're going to want to put apply all. That way when you're playing Warzone or playing any of these other modes, it's going to apply all of the plates on a single tap of your keyboard. Scroll down into vehicle behaviors, you're going to want the vehicle camera recenter on default. Free look activation is going to be always enabled. Camera initial position is going to be behind vehicle. Overlays behaviors, more specific overlays, you're going to want to drop this menu down. Backpack behavior is going to be toggle, backpack mouse cursor on, scoreboard hold, scoreboard mouse cursor off, you're going to keep scrolling down, map cursor is going to be on. Now these last few ones are going to be danger ping behavior, you're going to want double tap, double tap danger ping delay is going to be moderate, and ping wheel delay is going to be moderate as well. Okay, so now we're done with the gameplay settings, we are going to move on to the main keybind, so click on the keybinds tab. Alright, so move forward is obviously going to be W. Move backward is S, move left is A, move right is D. My interact key is going to be E. It's right there next to AWSD, so it's very easy to reach. Your jump stand mantle is going to be space. Obviously, your prone is going to be control. And so this will also actuate the dolphin dive. So once you click that, it'll just dolphin dive once you're sprinting. And if you want to go prone, all you have to do is just click it and it goes directly to prone. So it's also very, very nice. Cha uh, change stance slide, you're gonna want that leave, you're gonna want to leave that on blank. Now your crouch and slide is gonna be Q. I know it's a weird one, but you're gonna have to give it a you're gonna have to give it a shot. It's right there next to AWSD, very easy to reach, very easy to learn on. And um, it, it works for all you know hand sizes, so I'd highly recommend you guys uh, give this a shot. Your sprint tactical sprint focus is going to be shift movement advanced keybinds this one we're going to go in here and i think i just leave this on all default so uh, your combat keybinds are going to be fire weapon is going to be left mouse your aim down is going to be right mouse reload is going to be r next weapon is going to be two weapon mount is going to be the front mouse button on the you know the side of your mouse but if you don't have you know two side buttons on your mouse you're going to want to bind it to a nearby uh you know, key bind on your keyboard. It's not really a huge deal because most people don't even mount. So I'm just kind of assuming that you have a mouse that has two side buttons. I mean, most, most mouse, you know, most mice have two side buttons. So you're just going to have to set that on weapon mount. Your melee is going to be F. It's right there next to AWSD. So it's very easy to reach. Your lethal equipment is going to be three. Tactical equipment is going to be four. Field upgrade is going to be C. Armor plate drop item is going to be Z. Now, if we keep scrolling down, your show score, show map, that is going to be default. And then your ping is going to be clicking the scroll wheel. So if you click the scroll wheel, it's going to ping. And that's also very easy to, um, you know, key button, very easy to reach. You're not always, you know, reaching over your key bind, you know, your keyboard and your ping wheel is going to be alt. Okay, so as far as utilizing the other side button on your mouse, I like to use that for push to talk. I, you know, for me, I don't like to have an open mic, let alone I don't like to keep pushing keys to just mute and unmute my mic. It's kind of like a toggle. I don't like that. And so I'm going to be using the back mouse button, the side mouse button key to uh, have my voice chat as push to talk. Now, as far as the other key binds, I pretty much just leave those on default. So if you're wondering about what I have those set as, they're pretty much default. The only thing that I don't really notice just yet is uh, gestures in this game. Again, this game just came out, so I don't think they have hand gestures in there. I don't know if they're going to add them, but if they do add them, I'm probably going to work that keybind in somewhere. But just, you know, just know that 
all the other key binds that, you, that I have not mentioned yet are all default. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and leave a like and leave a comment of what you guys thought of this video. Make sure you share this video to a friend who needs help with their keybinds. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.